Praise the Lord, everybody. right now. We ask, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to bless, that you will continue to move. Oh, God, that you will bind everything of the adversary. Let your glory be revealed in this place and over the airways. Give us ears to hear the word of God, about to receive it, and a mind to be obedient unto it. Use your servant according to your perfect will. I ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. We're going to the book of Matthew. Amen. Chapter 22. All right, this is part two, and I'm hoping that we're able to finish it on tonight. It's a heart study. Mm -hmm. It's a heart study. Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 37 to 39. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. With everything that you have, amen, we're supposed to love the Lord with everything we have. All right? It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. God is definitely into love and loving other people. Not just yourself, but other people. People. All right, and so what I want to do is I want to go into um, some of the things that God loves, all right? The heart of God, um, we must speak um, his love language. And I was talking about that on the other Tuesday. One of the main things that God loves and the love language of the Lord, of course, is being obedient unto his word. So if you say that we love the Lord and we want to show the love of God to God, then we must be obedient. Amen. We must be obedient. So let's go to um, one of the things that God loves. All right? If we want to be a man after God's own heart, like David was, which is chasing and pursuing the heart of God, the things that God loves, so that we can do the things that God loves, then we need to know what some of those things are. That's the only way you're going to be able to show somebody um, the love that they want on their terms. And you have to know their likes and their dislikes. All right? The things that they are pleased with, that will please them. And the Bible lets us know that we are here for the pleasure of the Lord. Amen? We're not here to please ourselves. We're here to please the Lord, and I think that's where a lot of people get caught up because they're so busy trying to please themselves that they ain't paying any attention about how well are they pleasing the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're so busy trying to please themselves, it's a selfish thing. Mm -hmm. It's all about them. Mm -hmm. But it's not supposed to be all about us. It's supposed to be all about the Lord. That's why we exist. We exist for God's purpose and not our own. All right, and so we're going to go to a very familiar passage of Scripture to most, I would say, and that is St. John, the third chapter, and the 16th verse. It's one of the things that God loves. The Bible said, for God so loved the what? The world. The world. All right? So that's everybody that's in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right? Now, love is not just something that you say. It is something that you do. All right? You should say it, but you can't just say it. You have to show it so that someone can really experience it. All right? Um, you can say it all day long, but where's the action behind what you're saying? It has to be proof behind what you're saying when you say, I love you. Okay? And if there is no proof, then more than likely the person really doesn't. It's just something that they think. Okay? It makes you feel good. <laughs> they 
matter because love does that. And so God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, the son that he himself fathered, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have ever for a purpose. <laughs> For the entire world to show his love to the entire world. He gave Jesus. All right? The one that he himself fathered. And gave the seed for. To the woman. By the Holy Ghost overshadowing Mary. And God implants the seed into the woman which was actually God himself wrapping himself up in humanity. Amen. And coming down here in human flesh. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is love. I mean, my God, I mean, you, 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 you're the all in all. Amen. But to leave from where you are to come down here a bunch of bunch of mess. Among a bunch of mess. Messed up people. People that's going to reject you, that's going to ostracize you and to criticize you and um, eventually hang you on a rope. But herein is the love of God. Love will go a long way. I'm talking about real love, okay? I'm talking about God's kind of love. I'm not talking about phileo love. I'm not talking about eros love. I'm not talking about the other types of love. I'm talking about the kind of love that God has. All right? The kind of love that nobody else has for you unless they have love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because some things require the love of God to be able to love somebody. Because any type of love that you have will be exhausted. Amen. But God is able to love us beyond. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even ourselves. And so he so loved the world that he gave Jesus for that purpose of saving the world. Knowing, now knowing that everyone was not going to even accept him. See, real love, the God kind of love, is open and it gives you space to choose. It's not the kind of love that people have sometimes when they try to box you in themselves. And won't allow you to move an inch. And they call that love. Because I love them. You know, like the child where you can't even leave the house. <laughs> they got a tracker on your phone. If you say you're going to the store, they clock you. That's not free will. Real love says, hey, I'm going to let you be free to choose me. Now, it's up to you to choose me or not to choose me. And that's how God is. He wants us to choose him. He said, I set before you two open doors. All right, there's a door of life and there's a door of death. And he says to choose the one of life, but he's not going to make us. So that's, a, that's an open door. That's a, a free kind of love. It's not a love that is going to just tie you down. You don't want to be tied down. Mm -hmm. Tie me down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm serious. Tie me down. I want to be changed to you. I want to be connected to you. I'm not trying to go nowhere. But God's love, like I said, it is a love of freedom. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give 
give you rest. But it's up to you to come. If you don't want to come to him, you don't have to come to him. When he says that I am the light of the world and you refuse the light and you want to stay in darkness, then he will let you stay in darkness. Yeah. He offers you life, but if you choose death, then that's the way he will allow you to go. The ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But the choice is up to us. I'd rather choose life. Now, we can look at it also this way, because God says that he loves us and he gave his only begotten son for us. Now, the devil don't love you. <laughs> Let me tell you that now. He doesn't love you. He comes to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy you. So why would we look God love, because God is love, why would we look God love in the face? And then look the devil in the face who come to destroy us and we know it. <laughs> who in here don't know that the devil comes to destroy you? Anybody? You don't know that. Okay. So we look the devil in the face who we know comes to destroy us and we decide to go with the devil. <laughs> it's like a woman that has a choice between an abusive man that will take her life and a man that will love her to life. And she decides that she would rather be with the abusive man. That's how they do you choose the devil's side instead of choosing God. Because the devil has no other plans for your life than to destroy your life. He has nothing good that he wants to give you. <coughs> Again, his purpose is what Jesus said. The thief cometh but to rob, steal, comes to kill, and he comes to destroy whatever you have and whoever you are and whoever you're meant to be. So the devil has no good plans for you. So why is it that we tend to choose the devil sometimes over life? You know, they have a saying, and it happens to be true for some people, that good girls like bad boys. <laughs> and then they, they have other little quotes like, um, nice guys finish last. Mm -hmm. So you'd rather have somebody that's going to abuse you. You'd rather have somebody that you got to be calling up and checking their phone and all that kind of crazy stuff. You'd rather have that. Then a guy that's not going to mistreat you, but a guy that's going to respect you and do right by you, you'd rather have that. You'd rather have to be chasing behind some guy which you should never be doing in the first place. But that's what you'd rather have. You'd rather have drama than you'd rather have than peace. Oh, I'm talking. Give me talking. Amen. So some people are attracted to drama, and if they don't have drama, they can't sleep at night, so to speak. They are not comfortable unless they have some kind of drama. Some people want somebody snatching them by their arm and all that stuff. Y'all get over here! Mm. Yeah. Shut your mouth! What? If that is the case, it's definitely time to pray. And ask God for some help. And ask God for some deliverances within salt. Because that means salt is not healthy. A healthy self doesn't want something that will hurt itself. Doesn't want something that will disrespect them. And harm them or mistreat them or abuse them or use them. Not a healthy self. When you want other things like that, you are not healthy. Because you should love yourself. And when you really love yourself, you don't want all that to be happening to you. So, the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. And so I guess that's one of the key things. Because we don't always really love ourselves, so how 
much we really love our neighbor. I know we say we love ourselves, but then we need to determine whether we really love ourselves because we say a whole lot of stuff that's just not true. Just like we say, oh Lord, I love you, how I love you, oh, 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 oh. But when, it, when the rubber meets the road and it's time for us to obey the word of God, we don't obey the word of God. And Jesus himself said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will do what I say. Now, who lying? Oh, no. I love the Lord. I don't care what nobody said. You don't care what he said? Because mm. he told you what his love language was. Mm -hmm. And so he does not equate disobedience with love. Yeah. That's what, just like you shouldn't equate somebody going upside your head with love. I'm for love and not to be. Well, I have to be the name of the Lord. That's great stuff. I mean, but I've seen it done, and I know people do it. You understand what I'm saying? But that's, that's not what you should be into. But all kinds of things come with you as baggage. But God will help you unload those types of baggages if those are the things that's in your life. So that you can learn and understand that you're more valuable than that. You have value to yourself. And you don't deserve that type of mistreatment. You don't deserve that. So one of the main things is to learn to love yourself. And I do not agree with the song, learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. It is not. Learning to love God is the greatest love of all. And that's the truth. Because the Lord requires that we love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So that's the greatest love. It's wonderful to love yourself and you should definitely love yourself. But don't love yourself beyond your creator. Because that's going to become a problem. Because now you become your own God when you love yourself beyond him. And that means you're going to do your own will instead of his will. That's, that's how we get out of the world. Because we step into God's role for our own life. I'm doing this for me. This is what I like. This is what I want to do. But you need to understand, if you like it, you want to do it, but you want to do it with a body that somebody else created. You didn't create that body. And when he created the body, he created the body for himself. He didn't create the body for us to use the body how we want to use the body. It was created for the glory of God and the purpose of God only. That's why he told us the things to do and the things not to do with the body. That belongs to him. But again, he doesn't make us. He doesn't make us. And we can choose to do whatever we want to choose to do. But we cannot choose the consequences of hmm. our actions. God chooses that and he determines. And it's already set in motion. The wages of sin is, not might be, not could be, is, period, death. If we continue to walk in sin, then we will die and we will go to heaven. And in actuality, death is the separation from God. Ultimate death is being separated from God. And so, you will not have that connection. And just imagine being down in hell. No connection with God. And I think I was, I was reading something and the, the individual was saying, and I can't say that the Lord didn't do it, you know, but the Lord supposedly had taken them to hell. And they were saying how it was, and they were saying how Jesus was walking by, and how the people were crying out, and, you know, they were sorrowful, and, you know, they were saying, we knew you would come, and, 
He was letting them know that you already had your chance, and mm. basically he had to keep on walking. Mm. Mm. And how they were burning. And different things were happening to them, and they were being in torment. Just like that, that um, rich man said, Jesus said when he um, was saying, when he went to hell, and he looked over and saw Abraham, saw um, Lazarus in Abraham's bosom, and he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to dip his finger in some water and come and cool my parched tongue, for I am being tormented mm. in these flames. Mm -hmm. And the Bible lets us know that there is torment within us. Mm -hmm. So it's not just being tormented in one way. We go to hell. Mm -hmm. Somebody preached a message, and I'll tell you the truth, mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. tell hell I'm not coming. Mm -hmm. I will not be there. If you go, I will not be there. But if you come into heaven, I'll see you up there. I'll be there. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm not going to heaven. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Somebody said hell is too high and eternity is too long. My God. That, that's a rough place. But the lake of fire is even worse. Because the time will come. When death, hell, and the grave going to be called up. And we got to stand before God, or you're going to stand before God at that right throne judgment and be judged. And he's going to take death, hell, and the grave and cast it into the lake of fire. But there is fire and brimstone. They tell me that brimstone is like a suffocating uh, Oh no. That's what they say. Oh my God, and can you imagine constantly falling into our darkness? Just falling and falling and falling and all that kind of stuff. Can you imagine that? Are your sins worth it? I don't know. A sin on planet Earth is worth me going through all of that. Number one, without going through all of that, I don't know a sin on planet Earth worth me being separated from God. I don't want to be separated from God. He is my everything. He is my life. You understand what I'm saying? I'll say it and I'll say it again. He's not a part of my life. Some people make him a part of their life. You know, he has set on the side somewhere. Mm -hmm. Tell you ready to pick him up when you get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now you call on him, you know. Mm -hmm. That's not what he wants. He wants to be your life. That's why he said, love me with all. Love me with all. Mm -hmm. He wants to be your life. And you build everything around him. Don't try to put him around your stuff and all of that. No, you build everything around him. One of the wonderful things that Bishop Bell used to say, and he made us say it over and over again, which is never take it is, because he he stamped that thing in our brain. If you ever went to one of his Bible classes, it should be stamped in your brain. At the end of the service, when you get ready to dismiss, he say, I love Jesus. Have everybody say it. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And only Jesus. And only Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And only Jesus. And he kept saying it over and over and over and over and over again. You remember what I'm talking about, Faye? You don't remember. I need to remember her in here. <laughs> oh, I have mercy. Amen. She don't remember. I need another older person. Amen. That I love you. Bishop Bell. You've been to his classes. Yes. Do you remember him? Yes, I remember him. Do you remember at the end of every Bible class he taught, he would have us say, I love Jesus and only Jesus? Yes. And keep repeating it over and over and over and over and over again. And some people might be like, well, why would he be saying that? That means I don't love anything that Jesus is not in, that's not about Jesus. Yeah. Everything, everything in my life is about Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. And if it's not going to glorify Jesus, I don't love it. <laughs> no, I don't want it. It's Jesus, 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 and more Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you something. And that's how we have to be. And I know some people might.
might say, well, isn't that being a fanatic? A fanatic? Because I'm all about Jesus? When he does everything for me, I need him for every single thing. There's not a thing that I have that he didn't give to me. So how am I being fanatical about Jesus? I didn't say I was going to stand up every minute, every second saying Jesus, 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 Jesus. But my life is going to be about Jesus. That's what it's all about. My existence is about glorifying the Lord. It's about Jesus. And if you don't like Jesus, you're going to have a problem with me. Because what else is there really? If somebody is about Jesus and you're talking about you want them, you don't want them if you don't want Jesus. Because that's all they have. That's what they're going to give you. They're going to give you Jesus. And why should we want somebody that don't want Jesus? If you love, let me, let, me, let me put it like this. You have kids. The man telling you he loves you, but he don't want your kids. Who is a part of you. People that have problems would accept that. A woman that love her kids is not going to get with a man that don't like her kids. Because she's going to protect her kids. Because her kids are a part of her. So he would be, she would be saying bye-bye to that man. Because if you love me and don't love my kids, you don't love me. Those are my offspring. So if you say you love me and you don't love my God, you can't possibly love me. It's not it because we said it. 
No, you don't. No, you don't. You won't take care of nothing in the house, won't take care of none of the children, won't take care of the house, won't do no cooking, won't respect. I love y'all. No, you don't. You don't. And you're proving it. But yet, we'll say we love. You know how many people say they love the Lord? Mm -hmm. Then maybe we need to start asking questions. How do you know you love him? Because I feel it. Verses 
Now, right, let's talk to the elect lady. Amen. Let's open the church. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we should love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandment. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. What is love? Love is that we walk after his commandment. That's love. That's what God equates love with. Walking in his commandments, doing what he tells us to do. He sees that we love him. If a husband makes rules and regulations for his household, and everybody disobeys the rules and the regulations of the household, he comes home and sees everybody disobeys the rules and the regulations of his household, and everybody talking about they love him. Do you think that man feel love? Rejoices over you. 
over you. My God, sitting in heaven right now. Here it is our love made perfect that we may be, have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. My God, my God, my God. Now, another thing about God's heart. Let's go to John, the 16th chapter. You want to you be at this heart. The 16th chapter in verse 27. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me. That's Jesus. And have believed that I came out from God. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. The Father himself loveth you. Because you love the Lord. You love Jesus. Come on now. Come on, Lord. I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open up, if you will open up and let the Lord in, he said, I and my Father will come in and sup with you. Come on now, we're going to fellowship with the Lord. God wants to fellowship with us. The devil don't want us to be in fellowship with the Lord. That's why he wants to keep us in sin. Because he knows sin separates. God hates sin, but he loves the sin. And God is insistent that you get rid of the sin, that you repent of your sin and get yourself right with him. That's what God, he insists upon that. If we're going to have a rightful relationship with him. God don't play that stuff like some people, you know, they'll do you all kinds of wrong and everything and then they just come back and they might buy you something and all of that and they'll never say they saw it. What? That don't work with God. Oh, but well, let me give an extra offer. Come on. No, God said, no, I'm waiting for you to tell me you saw it. This is right. I am waiting for you to come and tell me that you are sorry for doing me wrong. That's right. So we can unite. We're not going to just pass that over. How you just mistreated me. By doing things outside of my will. Let's talk about that. We need, we need to communicate about that. Now, though your sins be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow, but you gotta first repent. You got you gotta repent. You gotta get that right. You gotta get that straight. You say you love me. All right, let's look at a natural relationship. People love each other, but they still sometimes do some things that they shouldn't do or say some things that they shouldn't say to the person. And it hurts the person. And I think that some of us believe that God don't have feelings. He has feelings. He's God, but he has feelings. And you can hurt him. Now, he's not going to die because you you heard him, but he can, he, he can be heard. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit that's within you. What grieves the Spirit is when you go contrary to the will of God. It grieves the Holy Ghost. It makes God sad. And you can feel it inside of you. Because it's inside of you. Anybody know what I'm, I'm talking about? Hallelujah. It don't feel good, do it? No. Because you get to experience some of that sadness that he's feeling. Mm -hmm. Inside of you. Mm -hmm. So grieve not the Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve him because we love him. So we want to get that stuff straight as fast and quick as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. We don't want to keep him grieving and hurting and being sad about us. Now the Bible tells us not, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. It also says 
don't give place to the devil. Right. So if you and your brother or your sister get out of order with one another, mm -hmm. you need to hurry up and try to get that fixed. Amen. So that the adversary can't get in. Mm -hmm. Why do we want to go around and hold on to stuff that we know we don't have right with God? Who is the most important person yeah. of all in our lives? And don't have stuff right with God. We just walking around and walking around, shouting over it, mm -hmm. dancing over it, mm -hmm. singing tongues over it, not getting straight with the Lord. What? What's that about? He's still dissatisfied. He's still not happy. And that's why he lets the word come forth. Amen. That's why he talks to you himself. That's why he talks to you through various things, even nature. Hmm. He talks to you about what's going on and how you need to fix things. Hmm. Because he wants a relationship made right and made whole. Anybody you love, you want to get it patched up. You don't want to leave it like that. You want it to be made whole again. You want to get it mended. You want to get it fixed so y'all can be happy again. But we cannot expect God to be happy where there is sin. We got to let the sin go. We got to get rid of the sin. God is not happy. He is grieved. And we don't want to keep him in a grieving state. Mm -hmm. Not if we say we love him. Because that's important to us that we be happy. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm moving on to Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs, the third chapter. It's another way in which God loves. Now this right here, everybody not going to like it. Mm -hmm. But it is needful and it is necessary. Proverbs 3rd chapter, verse 11 and 12. He says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord, what? Loveth. Loveth, continue to love. He do what? Correct. He correcteth. Mm. Even as a father the son in whom he delighted. Let's swallow that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> and exhale. Mm -hmm. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Sometimes God has to beat you. He has to correct you. He has to discipline you. Maybe you don't like the word beat. <laughs> you know, you are going along with the society these days. You know, that sounds like it's balling. <laughs> discipline. Neither be weary when uh, weary of his correction. All right, don't 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 want to throw in a towel because God is correcting you or God has to discipline you. Sometimes discipline is necessary. That's, that's the problem with the world today. And that's why a lot of our young people are doing what they're doing because there is no real disciplinary measures in place. And where there is no real disciplinary measures in place, then you just leave people Okay. And flesh is wicked. Yes. It has to be regulated. Amen. There has to be rules to govern flesh. Mm -hmm. Or it will self destruct. Mm -hmm. So, God tries to help us not to self destruct. And so, He will bring disciplinary measures our way. Sometimes God himself has to step in and do some things and make some things happen because we won't do it. Amen. And to save us from destruction, he will get in there and turn things upside down, inside out. Now, which is going to cause you pain? It's going to cause you pain. But it is for saving. That's because he loves us. I'm so glad that he loves me. I'm so, I'm so glad that he's willing to step 
this. I I'm glad about that. I'm glad, you know, it's just like sometimes parents may have to step in if you refuse to do what you know you should do. And they have to step in and help you do it. They help you get it done. You might not like how they're going to get it done. They help you get it done, but it's what's going to help you along in the long run. And so I am grateful for every discipline that God has done in my life. I'm grateful for it. I am grateful for every time that he got on my case and made me cry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he has made me cry. Oh, yes. But I am grateful for him. You hear what I'm saying? Every time that he made me feel like I was small enough to need to go on the rock and I just think, oh, God, it's hurt. Mm.
that in the first place. That's right. right. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Even though you didn't want to go. That's right. Come on. Try to be stuck. The Lord said, you better get yourself on up here. <laughs> and then you'll be happy about it. You will be grateful That's for what right. the Lord has done in your life. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, the 12th Was speaking unto you as unto children, my son. Here it is again. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. God has to get on your case. Sometimes he has to rebuke us. Sometimes he get up in your face. Sometimes he says, shut up. Not be quiet. Shut up. For whom the Lord loveth, there it is again, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Nobody escapes that because everybody needs to be corrected sometimes. Everybody needs to be corrected sometimes. Now, I, don't care, I don't care how many titles you get. There's still going to need, be times when God has to correct you. Because you are a human being and you tend to go in your own mind sometimes. Get up in your own spirit. It says, if ye endure chastening, God, what? God dealeth with you. He deals with you. You don't want God to deal with you? Deal with me, Jesus. Because if he stops dealing with you, you're in trouble. When God get quiet oh, and not talking to you no more about nothing you do, Jesus. you in trouble. <laughs> Serious trouble. You better know that. Because in the natural, uh -huh. when you don't care no more, it's over. It's done. When you don't care, I don't care what you do. Mm. It don't matter to me no man. Mm. I don't care. You are done with the hurt. Because you don't care. You don't want God to get to a place where he can leave you alone. Oh, and say, go about your business. Do whatever you want to do. I'll see you at the end. There we do. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that's what we're talking about. I'm child of God. Because you, you don't even, God is God saying, if you, you can't endure my chastisement, you can't endure my rebuke when I get on your case. Mm. Mm. You got attitude about me trying to discipline you, mm. then you no longer gonna be a son. You are gonna be a bastard child. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which co which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit. When God chastises us, it is for our profit mm -hmm. that we might be partakers of his holiness. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lord. You're going to miss out on some stuff, some mm -hmm. good stuff, mm -hmm. if you don't allow God to work on you. You got to let him work on us. I don't want to miss out on whatever God has for me. I don't want to miss out what he has for me in himself. Holiness is a beautiful, oh my God, it's so, oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's lovely in this beautiful. 
All right? You, you, you're, gonna, you're going to exhort, you're going to warn them. Mm -hmm. All right? You got to warn with all long suffering. And you got to do it with long suffering because it takes some people longer to get it than others. Amen. Mm. Like some children get it right away. That's right. They some don't. Mm. Some other children, you got to keep on mm. reproving and rebuking mm -hmm. and chastising them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth. Meet me upstairs. In the <laughs> God knows that time. And I wouldn't want to keep being, I wouldn't want to keep getting that chest out. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm one of those people that I can learn from other people. Mm -hmm. Verse 
be upright. Those are doing things the way he wanted to be done. 146 things came for The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth who? The righteous. My God, you are loved. Now, when you go home, you can read Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verse 9. Verse 9 that's going to go along with that. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and move along a little bit here. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Thanks to God, He loves us. Now, this is one of those studies that some people seem to have a problem with. 2 Corinthians 9, chapter, verse 1 through 7. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the frowardness of your mind, and this is a good church, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has provoked very many. Because people watch what you do. Somebody's watching. Yet have I said the brother, at least our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf. That, as I said, ye may be ready. Least happily, if they of Macedonia come with me and find you unprepared. We that we, that we say not ye, should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you, because Paul try to make sure that they don't end up being embarrassed, that they don't boast on, these, boast on these people, you know, how they doing what they're supposed to do, and showing love. And make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready, as a matter of bounty, and not as of covetousness. But this I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. I'm talking about giving now. Mm -hmm. All right? I'm talking about giving. And he was so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So if you sow a little bit, you're going to get a little bit. If you sow a lot, you're going to get a lot. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God what? Love is a cheerful giver. That's another thing God loves. He loves a cheerful giver. Well, that's why you gotta go to that because that's in the Bible too. That's right. <laughs> Just like everything else is in the Bible. If you want to know the heart of God, this is a part of the heart of God. Is that we be givers. Alright? And so this church is there, they're coming to collect things so that they can be a blessing unto other children of God in this particular um, scripture. And he wants them to be ready to do the giving. And we, we don't have to do it grudgingly. I don't really want to give it. Damn, that's all they talk about. That's all they, how much money did you give to the devil in the world? If you were smoking cigarettes, drinking, some, some people were, they were smoking cigarettes, they was drinking, come on now, they was getting high, some people was going to the club, some people was taking drugs, come on now, some people was giving their money to the men or giving their money to the women, am I right? Right, yes. Uh-huh, and some people was going to the strip joints too. Hallelujah. And some more stuff. Okay? So if we can give our money for sinful stuff, then we ought to be willing to give our stuff for God and stuff. Mm. All 
right and righteous things. All right, people going to concerts with people putting spells on them and everything. And they paying all that money for somebody to put a spell on them. Mm, mm. I'm serious. Mm. These people are demonic. Yes. yes. But they paying big bucks to go to these, these to, to go hear these people singing stuff. Yes, they are. And they need them with the stuff. And they're not hiding what they're doing. They're doing it right out in the open. Mm -hmm. Doing that witchcraft and all that right out in the open, right in their face. Mm -hmm. yeah. And telling you to agree with it. And people agreeing with it. And raising their hands and agreeing with it. Don't even realize what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They just think they're having a good time. Child! Oh, that was, that, was that was a good concert. I mean, I had a ball. I slept out. I slept. I slept outside all night long, waiting to get into that. Wow. <laughs> to be demonized. To be demonized. Come on now. They done spent your rent money and all that kind of crazy stuff mm -hmm. to go see somebody shaking their butt and letting them put curses on you mm -hmm. and your pants. Mm -hmm. My God. And God is showing you that the people are of the devil, but you're going to keep on going. And if it's just a mess, because you got church folk that love these people mm. and promoting the devil. Mm. They tell it for, for the demons. Yeah. I'm talking about preaching folk going along with these people. People that got the Holy Ghost mm. promoting these people. Mm. Talking about they praying for the person and all of that. And the anointing on their life. That person keeps what anointing. They got the devil on their life. Yes, yes. That's not no anointing. I just don't understand. I don't get it. You try to be a friend or his friend. Know that they are against the very Christ that you say you serve. And they're not hiding it. I don't see how you're missing it unless something's wrong with you. I don't see how. But all these people are friends with these people. Like friends. Mm -hmm. All right? The friend of the world is the enemy to Christ. Amen. You hooked up to something demonic. That ain't going to work. Definitely not. God loves a cheerful giver. All right? In the book of Deuteronomy 16, chapter verse 16 and 17, you will see how um, it was the men, they were coming together three times a year, and they were supposed to bring offerings to the Lord um, as they were able. You know, if you weren't able to bring but a little bit because that's all you had, then that's what you brought. Um, but the more you had, then the more you were supposed to give. And that's the same thing with us. All right, we got to be willing to take up the slack for people that don't have it if you have more. You know, and not be complaining about it. You want to have more. They may only have a dollar. But it's going to take more than a dollar to get the thing done. That's why God gave you more. So then you should be giving more. That's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what it says. All right. And then in the book of Matthew, the Lord said, don't let your arm, um, don't let people see your arm when, you, when you're giving to people. <coughs> All right? Now, let's be like, oh, yeah, you know, I just want everybody to know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You did something for mm -hmm. Evangelist Brown, and now, Brother Bobby, you got to go tell him. You got Sister Bobby, you got to tell him. You got to tell uh, Minister Brown. You got to tell Sister Juanita. <coughs> you got to tell Sister Faye. Now, you done went around the whole church, done told everybody what you did for Evangelist Brown. Come on, now. Now, that might be a verse to her. So why would you go tell them? Mm. Yes, child, I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you, she didn't even handle them. this call. <laughs> this kind of stuff is true, though. That is true. Yeah. And I had to buy her some discos, honey, for her house, so she can get her dishes clean. And some, some detergent. That's safe. That's true. Nobody wants you walking around and telling everybody their business. That's their business. That's between 
be given to you. Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 38. It said, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good man, press down, shake it together, and run it over, shall men give it to your bosom. Mm -hmm. All right? Because God loves a cheerful giver. If you are a giver, don't just give because you want something to be given to you. Mm -hmm. All right? Give because you are showing love. God don't want us to get in a place where, oh, I'm, I'm just giving so that I can give. That's mm -hmm. false selfishness. That's not love. I'm going to give so I can get. I'm going to give to you, you can give to me. Um, and if you don't give to me, I'm going to be mad at you because you know I gave to you. And how can you not give to me when I gave to you? So what was your motive? That's right. Your motive was so that they can give something back to you. Your motive should be that you're doing the will of God, showing the love of God. Therefore, they don't owe you anything. Except to say thank you. I hope they should say that. But even if they don't, you have done the will of God. Amen. That's right. They do not have to follow you around like your little flunky. <laughs> they don't have to be doing that. Because some people, good Lord have mercy. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Now you got to. When they say jump, you got to say ha ha. Because they did something for you. Yeah. I'd rather say keep this. Mm -hmm. I'd rather yeah. suffer. Yeah, um, you keep it. God yeah. will make a way. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what in the world? Mm. What is that? Because you did something for somebody. Now they got to walk around. Everywhere you go, they got to go. You go to the bathroom, they got to go to the bathroom. You come sit at the front, they got to sit at the front. You sit in the middle, they got to sit in the middle. Oh, you better sit right here because if you don't, because you know what I did. I did something. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That's great stuff. Oh, Jesus. And it's true. And then the last scripture is Mount Tyler, 3rd chapter, verse 8 through 12. All right, and that's talking about paying tithes. The Lord said, amen, that this whole nation has robbed me. All right, and let's not say that the tithe was under the law. Tithe was before the law. Before the law. All right, and there is scripture to prove it. Tithe was before the law, and yes, it was a part of the law as well, but it was before the law. So it didn't just get started where the law came in. All right? And God said, this whole nation had robbed me. And they said, and where in? He said, in tithes and in offerings. He said, that's where they robbed him. Tithes and offerings. And he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that his house might be filled. And he would open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they would not have room enough to receive. And that he would rebuke the devourer for their sake. Because they obeyed his word in giving. Listen, anybody that has a God. Now we know there's only one true and living God. But people that supposedly have gods that they have created in their own minds, all gods require something from you. All gods require something from you, even the true and living God. He requires some things from us. And if you read that Bible, you will notice that he requires things from us. When Abraham went to battle and he conquered and God blessed him mm -hmm. and he ran into Melchizedek, mm -hmm. Abraham mm -hmm. gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. That's a tithe. Tithe is tenth. If you come putting in that envelope a fifth, you have not given a tithe. You gave an offering and you lied. All right? Talking about that's what I had. This is my tithe. That is your tithe. You had $500, you put $25 in there. That's not a tithe. No, it should be 50. Yes. What's going on? You had 1,000, it should be 100. Mm -hmm. You put 50. Mm -hmm. This is my tithe. Who you lying to? Mm -hmm. You lying to God about his own money? Mm -hmm. God said, if we do that, mm -hmm. if we rob him, he said, you're going to be cursed with a curse. 
And the problem of it is, is we don't know what kind of curse it's going to be. I don't want no curses on me. I don't want no curses in my house. I don't want no curses over my children. I don't want no curses over my family. I don't want no curses over my land. I don't want no curses over my vehicle. I don't want no curses over my Oh, no. That's it. Absolutely not. Because God knows how to get his money from you. But when God gets to get the money, he makes you get more money than what you was asking you for. He asked for 10, and you're oh, I'm going to send this to get me a dress. <laughs> I saw this dress I like. I'm going to get me this dress. God might burn up all your clothes. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real, the truth. Brown the house, down. you don't know what God will, what God will allow. You don't know. You don't know. He said, if you pay your time, your own, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Mm -hmm. What if you're not doing what I said? Then I don't rebuke. Yes. Now what's going to happen to you? If God stopped rebuking the devil, because you know he wanted to get at us. You know that's right. Yes. He can't wait to get at you. And if God don't rebuke the devil, he coming in fast, quick, and in a high rig. You don't know what kind of chaos he's running away from. You do not know. I don't know. I know I don't want it something that much. We are the earth, the Lord's the full day of the world, and they that dwell in. Everything belongs to God. So God is going to say, give me 10% 10, 10 of what I've given unto you and offerings. Look, 10% and offerings of what I've given unto you. That's not money anyway. All of it's God. Mm -hmm. Not part of it. Not just the 10%. All of it is God. But God said, I'm going to let you have, utilize the rest to be a good steward over the rest. But if I decide that um, I want 10 more percent, it's mine. What you been that attitude for? <laughs> That's crazy. I said, well, like, can you hold my money for me? You're like, yeah, I want some things. And then I come here, one day, and I'm not talking about like if you, you know, if you're a person that spend money, you really need somebody to hold your money. That's different. Then they should say no. But, you know, I'm not talking about that. So that point, I say, oh, I'm one need Can you give me $20? And she was looking at me $20. Girl, <laughs> if you don't get my money, I'll survive. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's my money. That's not your money. Girl, you better get my money. Now, at this point, give me, give me all my money. Get all my money back. Give me all my money. And we don't, we don't want God to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because that would mean if God said, give me all my money, that means I'm going to take your job. Ooh. Yeah, you, you ain't gonna have no money. It's gonna take the job. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I have so much happening to you, money's going left, right, in every direction. And when you look, you ain't gonna have nothing. You're gonna have holes in your pocket. That's it. Just as quickly as you put it in, as quickly it's gonna go up. And we don't want that. So we gotta show God love and not do this grudgingly. Happily give God what belongs to him. And be grateful and bless his holy name. And be thankful that he is blessing us to be able to have yes. stuff. Yes. And the more we do that, the more God is going to bless us. Yes. Now when God blesses us, we have to have the discipline. And I've talked about this before because some people you can't tell they was blessed. Right. They've been blessed over and over and over and over again. But you can't tell they was blessed because they spend every dime every time. They don't have discipline in their spending. It's not that they are not being blessed, but they don't have discipline in their spending. And sometimes you need to go through a financial court. So you can learn how to spend correctly. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the increase. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's why you, you need those types of savings that you can't just go hit it out. Mm -hmm. If 
you that type of person. You can't just go get it out. You're going to pay a penalty for going to get it out. You understand what I'm saying? You, you, you got to help yourself. You got to help yourself. Because God wants his people to increase. God wants his people to have. God don't want his people to have a lack. All right? Most of the time when you have lack, that's because you're going through a personal trial. That's, that's learning and getting experiences with God. But he don't want you to stay in that state for the rest of your life. Most of the time he don't. And if he wants you to stay in that state for the rest of your life, more than likely it's because that's going to be a problem if you get a lot. And so God got to keep you at a certain level so you can stay saved mm -hmm. from being his will. Wow. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want God to have to be like that. But if it came down to it, you would be like that. Because I want to be saved. I'm trying to Because being saved is the most important thing. All right? It's a hot thing. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to ask if, if you will, mm -hmm. our breath, and you want to be a blessing to the church on tonight, mm -hmm. that you will go to your Give Your Five, Solid Rock Apple Solid Faith Church, where you will see my picture. Mm -hmm. Go to the Bible class. Um, tab, click right there and give your offering. Be a blessing to the church. All right? And if you don't have Givelify or you would like to do Cash App, it is dollar sign S R A F C. No, dollar sign Solid Rock A F C. Dollar sign Solid Rock A F C. All right? And just in that little memo, put Bible study. Dollar sign Solid Rock AFC and in the memo put Bible study to give your offering there. Amen. We're going to ask that Sister Faye will come and stand for basket for those of you that's in house that would like to give the cash or check. By way of announcement, tomorrow at 6 a.m., PCAFI, Amen, has a prayer conference call and our presiding bishop. Amen. Is on there a lot of the times as he was last week. All right. And at the end of the prayer, he usually gives some good nuggets from the Word of God, and you want to be there so you can also get that. All right. Um, you're going to be blessed. I mean, you're going to be blessed. And you can write that down and carry with you throughout the rest of the day. At seven, at twelve, uh, at twelve noon, Solomon Rock has a conference call, and you can. Utilize that number to call um, and pray with the saints of God. The Solid Rock. All of this information is on our Facebook page. Uh, at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, there will be prayer in house as well as on Zoom for those that cannot make it to the building. Amen. This Friday at 7 o'clock, there will be Solid Rock's Youth Bible Study in person. All young people, all young people, you should be in the Bible study. All right, they're going to be looking for you. And I will be inquiring <laughs> whether you were in the building. And Sunday at 930 is our Christian education. It is in person as well as on Zoom for the adult class. 11 o'clock is our morning service. Amen. Come join us if you are able. If you don't already have a church home. If you have a church home, do not join us. All right? You go to your own church. All right? If it's a Bible believing, tongue talking, the Holy Ghost walking, and all that hand clapping and something. Um, all right? Baptizing in Jesus' name. All right? And they feel the Spirit of God that they're speaking in other tongues. Okay. If not, then you're welcome. Amen. No evening service. Um, no evening service this Sunday. It will be Mother's Day. All right. Mother's. Hallelujah. Mother's Day this Sunday. So appreciate your mom. If you don't have your mom in the natural, maybe you have a mom spiritually or someone that you look up to. All right. You can appreciate them at this time. I don't have my mother, and I don't have my father either. Amen. But the Lord will be your mother and your father, and he will give you people that love you as well. All right, so let's celebrate. Let's celebrate that day. I've already stated where I'm going to go, you know, in advance. <laughs> Me too. As some of them will be saying, but it's, yes, it's the same place that I like to go. Over and over and over again. 
That's, that's how I feel. I like this. No need to be said. You always go there because if you're showing love to the person, you do what the person likes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unless they want to go to somewhere else, which is much more expensive. You don't want to spend money like that. So, yes. In case y'all looking right now, some of y'all might be looking right now. Absolutely. Hallelujah. I like the food and the food. Okay? So, go and celebrate Mother's Day. And to all of our teachers, all of our teachers in public school, amen. We appreciate you today. We appreciate you all day. We want you to know that. For the great job that you all are doing, it is it is much more difficult now. Yes. Amen. To try to be in those classrooms and teach those children and try to hold it down. Because the devil is, is really on the rampage. You understand? And I know you understand. And you're about to pull your hair out sometimes. Amen. But God has blessed you and given you strength to endure. Amen. What you have been enduring. Amen. And it's been rough, especially since COVID. It's been really rough. And we want you to know that we're praying for you. And we are so grateful for you. And those of you that may not teach public school, amen, but you teach in other ways. You may teach Sunday school. All right. You may be homeschooling. In whatever way you are teaching, we appreciate you and want you to know that God is going to bless you for what you are doing. So hang in. Don't give up. Please don't give up. Our young people really need you. Mm -hmm. Our young people really, really, really need you. All right? Please don't give up. And we pray to God that you to bless you. Amen. Those of you online, we thank God for you. Amen. And we want you to know that we love you. And God loves you.